We've been celebrating two monumental projects here at Mount Lebanon recently. The first is the construction by the Shakers of the Great Stone Barn between 1858 and 1860. The second is the effort, 10 years in the making, of restoring this landmark structure. The current project presented immense technical challenges. The barn, as you can see, is both immense and extremely fragile. After a disastrous fire in the early 1970s that consumed the roof and the original timber frame. For the last 40 years, these walls have stood unsupported and exposed to the elements. Luckily, we've been able to enlist the talent of nationally recognized experts in engineering and preservation to help us plan the restoration. Assembling the financing to begin the work has also been a monumental task. We would like to especially thank the five institutions that provided major grant support, and the hundreds of individual and private foundations who have generously donated to this effort. The restoration work is just beginning, and your continued support is necessary to both complete the current project and to define the next chapter of the story. Please help us return this iconic building to use as the Shakers always intended it. So the stone barn. Yeah, so tell us how you, you got involved with the project. Um, what drew you to it? Yeah, this is a, a really unique building. Uh, we were drawn to this predominantly because it's it's a stone building. Mm -hmm. uh, we've never seen a barn of this size. Yeah, 200 feet long. 200 feet long, 50 feet wide, over 40 plus feet tall. Um, just stone, no internal structure. Yeah. We've got stone on the inside, stone on the outside, and, and really unique stone features up at the top of the building that show some of the historical architectural aspects of the project. Yeah, a flat roof. Flat roof um, and no real structure holding these walls together. Independent walls, it's, it's, it's quite a unique structure out Not, there. And, and it was in pretty rough shape though. The, this is the west wall that we're looking at right here, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, there's visible cracking mm -hmm. down the center of this west wall. There's existing steel around these main supports. Uh -huh. um, but the main aspects of this project will lead us into the restoration of this wall, the restoration of the top, and additional steel supports down in the base. Okay. And so that's what's being described over here. Is this kind of an overview of the project? Yes. Uh, this is the four main aspects of the project. Okay. The predominant being injection grouting. Yeah. Um, there's stone on the outside of the building, there's stone on the inside of the building. There's nothing holding them together. Time, water, rain has pushed those elements apart. Okay. But in order for us to do proper injection grouting, there's a couple other steps we need to do as well. Huh. Um, down the bottom here, we have repointing and rebuilding of walls. Yeah. If we were to just put grout injection into the walls, it would just start coming out of all the different holes on the outside of the masonry wall. Oh, okay. So what we first come in and do is, both on the interior of the barn and the exterior of the barn, we do masonry repointing. Okay, so we're traditional masonry repointing. Tra traditional repointing, we're filling the joints between the stones so uh -huh. that when we put grout into the wall, it won't just start leaking out. It'll actually stay within the wall cavity. Great. And the other part is down on this west wall that we were looking at earlier. There is some steel in place, but we're really going to kind of beef that up uh, in the west wing. That has the tallest elevation from okay. bottom to top of the building, and that wall is showing some bowing out. We're going to introduce some steel on the inside that's going to hold that wall in place and not let it move any further than it already has. Okay, and that's that's the steel here, it's sort of in this. Uh, what's called the manure vault in the port building. Correct. Those blue lines that you see there represent steel, and that's going to lock in both the west large wall with the north and the south ring, mm -hmm. and really hold that whole, whole manure yeah. pit in place. And I'm noticing, looking at this diagram here, the orange, that's the repointing work. It, it looks like a giant zipper. Why, yeah. why is it in that uh, particular pattern? Over the course of the last several decades, we've seen a lot of different wear and tear of the exterior mortar uh, predominantly because water's been getting into the wall cavity. Okay. The repointing in some of the areas right at the window cavities has held up and, and stayed in really good shape. Uh -huh. On the inside of the building, just above these orange points, there's actually shelves that used to hold the floors okay. that used to go across the So that's the, the setback for the joists. So at those setbacks, we actually now have a spot where snow, rain, water can work its way into the building okay. and work its way out to the exterior and really deteriorate the mortar that's right. been in place. So the floors were here and it's really anything around there that's really going to be the worst area because you have ice and snow building up on the inside working its way to the outside. Correct. Great. 
And the other main aspect of the top is this red uh, that, we, that we looked at earlier, it says rebuild. Uh -huh. That rebuild area, there's nothing covering the top of that wall. So uh, the stones themselves are all loose. The top foot plus yeah. is just stacked stone, no mortar holding them in. No mortar at all. Bad weather, strong wind, those stones can fall off. So we've taken that down over a foot and we've rebuilt that top of the wall cavity okay. to make that a safer environment for anyone walking around the site. That's great. So this is pretty interesting. Mind tell me what we're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a scale model of the barn, and you can see how the, the, the design really took full advantage of the site, and how these uh, sheds were um, created. These enclosed uh, yards that protected the cattle and the farmers from the winter winds and cold. And then on the other side, the cutaway really gives you a good idea of the internal design. So the wagons came in on this end from Darrow Road and they traveled along the wagon bridge and then the hay was tossed down into these lofts on either side of the bridge where it was later chopped and mixed with grain in the center aisle. And you can see these openings in the floor, those were chutes that connected down to the lower level and the cattle stalls. And those chutes, Mike, came, the, the feet came right down into these feeders. And this is an original from our collection. Yep. And, you, and if you see, they can actually pivot so that you could swing them right in front of the cattle, and then it was feeding time. Yep, pretty neat. All right, so tell me what's happening on the top of the wall there, Mike. We really had to stabilize the top of that wall. The stones were falling off, and we rebuilt it from the uh, top foot. Why don't we go inside and take a look? All right, that sounds great. So, wow. this is our scaffold setup. That's incredible. So I think it was probably a real challenge to get scaffolding up in here, wasn't it, Mike? It was. We designed a center row in the center mm -hmm. to stabilize the south elevation wall so that we could brace it back because we're not tied into the actual structure. Huh. We'll be able to reuse this center wall when we break down the scaffold on the south and move it to the north side. So here we are. Uh, it really is something in this barn, isn't it? What? Down this end over here. Yeah, that's great. So down on this west end of the building, uh, this is called the uh, the old manure pit. So we literally would be in the middle of a giant pit of manure. That that wouldn't be so great. But you really get a sense of scale of this building. I mean, look how far up that top wall is. It's just really it's incredible. Yeah, a lot of area in here. A lot of a lot of stone repair to get done in this in this yeah. section of the building. So here we are right on the wall where we've already done grout injection. You can see these different spots. This actually makes a grid system. They're two feet apart and they're actually 16 inches high. On this whole wall, we're gonna have about 10,000 entry ports. Wow. What you see now is the repointing. We've already covered these holes. But what we did is we did a one inch diameter hole. We went halfway into the wall, about 18 inches thick. It's a three foot wall. And we put grout into the walls. We see it come out different holes down the line and we fill large sections every day. And at the end of the day, we come back and we plug these holes with the mortar to try and look like we were never here and never did the work. At the end of the day, we've got to figure it out. They're going to probably put over 300,000 pounds of grout into these walls. That's a lot And of the grout. voids, they're just there now. That's just a lot of grout. Yep. So uh, Mike, what are these markings here? What does RB stand for? RB is a uh, consulting firm that we've teamed up with that when they do the radar testing and inspection and they find an anomaly in their readings uh, that pops up as a blip or what could possibly be a void. We come back, we drill these locations, we can look inside to see if there is a void, if it's small or big, and if it's big we'll fill it up with grout to really ensure that we're, uh, that's our quality test to make sure we're filling these walls 100%. So we're standing you know, right behind the parapet wall at the very top of the building and you can really see how incredibly fragile this is. Yes, I mean the stones are literally just laying loose up here. So we'll be taking this down to a sound elevation and rebuilding this with some modern practice, but really reusing the same stones and trying to put them back in the same spot. Yeah. And will you also have to rebuild the lintels as well? Yes. We will. And we're looking to recreate something that kind of historically matched what was there at the time mm -hmm. um, that will also preserve and give us the structural strength we're looking for with a more modern code. Yeah. And as you look off to this uh, south elevation, you can see that we've already repaired the top of this wall. 
wow. and you can get a really sense that uh, the stones are more locked in place and you won't have any more issues of stones falling off the top of that. You've got a nice straight line now, and you can see the difference between the work we did this season and what we're planning for next. Yep. It's an incredible building. It's a pretty good first season, and we're really, really looking forward to getting back here next year and finishing yeah. the project. We certainly are looking forward to having you back. Really, next season is where 